In this video, I'll be going over the bones of the skull that you will need to know for the practical. This green bone is your frontal bone. This is one of your two temporal bones. This is your other temporal bone. And these are your two parietal bones. And right below that is your occipital bone. From the parietal bone, running medially is your sagittal suture. Between the occipital and the parietal bones is your lambdoid suture. Along the border of your temporal bone, between the parietal and the temporal bone, is your squamous suture. And then between the frontal bone and the parietal bones is your coronal suture. Sutural and wormian bones are found between sutures and they're basically just little extra bone pieces. The number and the location will vary depending on each specimen. And there's one located right here between the lambdoid suture. Interparietal bones are also not present in all skulls, so you have to look at multiple specimens as well. And I don't have any here, but this is what your interparietal bones would look like. And basically, these bones are found between the parietal bone and your supraoccipital bone right here. So these are your interparietal bones. Now from the occipital bone, this little bumpy region is your external occipital protuberance. The big hole right here is going to be called your foramen magnum and it's basically where the spinal cord and the brain stem will run through. From an internal view, this hole right here is your hypoglossal canal and it goes all the way out and comes out right there. They're located beneath your occipital condyles. These smooth surfaces right here are your occipital condyles, and they articulate with the surfaces of the atlas. So right where the squamous suture is, beneath that is your temporal bone. This is your external acoustic meatus, also known as your external auditory canal. You can say either one. Right here is your mastoid region. So this is your mastoid process. This little stylus looking piece is your styloid process. Located right here, this little flat region is your tympanic region. This jelly looking material is your mandibular fossa. This is what connects the mandibular condyle of the mandible right here to the skull. It connects right there to the mandibular fossa. Now we're gonna look at the temporal bone from the inside. Okay, so Between these yellow lines is your temporal bone. So I'm gonna start with naming this region, which is kind of like a smooth internal lake. This is known as the squamous region or squamous region. Now, this mountainous looking region of the temporal bone is the petrous region. Okay, now located on the petrous region, right here is your internal auditory meatus or internal auditory canal, internal acoustic meatus, however you wanna call it. But this is your internal acoustic meatus. Now, right below this big hole right here 
It's kind of an oval shape and it's between the occipital bone and the temporal bone. That is your jugular foramen, right there. Now let's look at an external view of the base of the skull, of the temporal bone. So right here, the sutures, they are the boundaries of the temporal bone and these yellow lines follow all the way around. So that's all of the temporal bone. So as you know that this is your mandibular fossa, this is your styloid process, and this is your mastoid process, just like this, okay? So, where I'm poking a hole through right now is your jugular foramen. Remember, it's between the occipital bone and the temporal bone, and you can see it from both sides. Let's see, just like that between the occipital and temporal, bo temporal bone. And then right above the jugular foramen is the carotid canal. Okay, so I'm gonna be showing you guys now the sphenoid bone. So this kind of butterfly looking bone right here is your sphenoid bone. The first structure I'm gonna show you are the lesser wings. They are located right along here. These are the lesser wings, okay? These are the greater wings of the sphenoid bone. You can also see the greater wings from the orbit right there. That is the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. And it's also right there. All right, and then that located right there is the lesser wing. Now that I have this into view, you see this hole right here running in to the lesser wing. I'm gonna poke through it and it comes out right there. That is your optic canal and there's one on both sides. So let's go the other eye, find the greater wing, find the lesser wing, and then there's your optic canal coming out right there. Okay, so right here, I'm gonna kind of circle around this area. This is kind of like a U shape, if you can see it. This is your cella turcica, this whole little region. And of the cella turcica region, this depressed area is your hypophyseal fossa. Within the hypophyseal fossa is where your pituitary gland will sit. Right there. So this is the hypophyseal fossa of the cella turcica. The next thing I wanna show you is this oval hole of the sphenoid bone. This is your foramen oval. So if you can locate this, and then you just look right above that, that is your foramen rotundum. So find the foramen oval, and then just go up a little bit, and there's your foramen rotundum. And then the last structure I'm gonna show you guys, okay. So here's your foramen rotundum, and this big kind of whole area. I'm going to poke through it. There's one on both sides. That is your superior orbital fissure. And you can see it from your orbit and you can see it from the internal view of the skull. Once again, that's your superior orbital fissure. And you can see it on both sides. Right there and right there. And the last thing I want to point out from the sphenoid bone are the pterygoid processes. And it's these little leg looking structures on each side. So here is your sphenoid bone, right? All of this area. And then right there below it are your pterygoid processes. 
So now I'm going to be showing you guys the ethmoid bone from within the skull. So right here is a superior view of the ethmoid bone from within the skull. Once again, we're looking at the skull internally. So this little fin-like structure right here, this is your crystagalli. And surrounding that is a kind of, of a plate-like structure. Now that's your cribiform plate. So from the nasal cavity, you can also see the ethmoid bone structures. Right here, on both sides of the nasal cavity, is your middle nasal concha, okay? And what makes up a part of the nasal septum right here is your perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. And that makes up the first half of the nasal septum. This other half is the vomer bone, the perpendicular plate of the vomer bone. So now I'm going to show you guys the maxilla. This whole region right along there is the maxilla. Right up here are going to be your frontal nasal processes. There's one right there as well. This is your nasal bone. Okay. And so these are your frontal nasal processes because they are connected to both your frontal bone and your nasal bone. So next, I'm gonna show you guys these holes right here. These are your infraorbital foramens. Remember you have your mental foramens down below. And then those are your infra orbital foramens. And the way you can kind of remember that is this is your orbital and these are located inferiorly to your orbital. So infraorbital foramens. Now located right here, this is going to be your zygomatic process. And that is because this bone right here is your zygomatic bone. Okay. So this is the zygomatic process of the maxilla bone because it starts to connect to the zygomatic bone. Okay, right here. And so now I'm gonna show you guys. It opened up. So if this is your maxilla right here, you can't actually see the maxillary sinus from the skull because it's an open cavity. So you need to crack it open and look at it from here. Here is your maxillary sinus, it's this open cavity. And if this is the front view like that, right there, this region back here, this is your palatine process, okay? So right there is your palatine process, and it is the anterior region of your hard palate. Right here is your zygomatic bone, and over here is your temporal bone. So if this is your zygomatic bone, this region right here is going to be the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. You're never going to use the same word as a process on the same bone because it's the process is the area that's leading up into a new bone. So if this is your zygomatic bone, here's the temporal process leading up into the temporal bone. And you'll also need to know that this is the zygomatic process right here, this region of the temporal bone. It's labeled six. So this so is, here's your nasal bone. Here is the frontal nasal process of the maxilla. Right here is your lacrimal bone. There's one on both sides. See, it's labeled 14 is your lacrimal bone. And if you look closely, right there, there is a little canal located right there. That is your lacrimal canal. 
and within it is a little sack that will collect all of your tears. The lacrima is actually Latin for tears. So that's why they call it the lacrimal bone. And this is the lacrimal canal that collects your tears. So if I open this up and show you an external view of the base, this is the horizontal plate of your palatine bone. And these holes right here are the greater palatine foramens. And if I was to cut a sagittal view through the skull, you would be able to see the perpendicular plates of the palatine bone. They're showing you a sagittal um, plane cut through the skull. Alrighty, and back to here. So here's your horizontal plate. And right there is gonna be the vomer bone. And this is not the only place you can see the vomer bone. You can, it also makes up the bottom half of the nasal septum, right there. So there's a few more structures that I wanna point out. And the first one is your inferior nasal concha. So if you remember, this was your middle nasal concha of the ethmoid bone and located inferiorly is the inferior nasal concha. Okay. Now specifically, I wanna go over all of the bones of the orbit. You'll need to know that there are six bones that the orbit is made up of. So let's start back here. It's made up of your ethmoid bone. Let's go up here. This is all your frontal bone. So from your ethmoid to your frontal, to your lacrimal, to your maxilla, to your greater wings of the sphenoid bone, right there. And then also to the zygomatic bone. So that's six bones in total that makes up the orbit of the skull. And the last thing that I wanna show you is there's three fosses. So if I was to just kind of scoop out this whole front area, this is your anterior cranial fossa. Now the next second divot located in the middle, this is the middle cranial fossa. And now right back here is your posterior cranial fossa. Alrighty, and those are all the bones of the skull that you're gonna need to know for the practical.